So just like when we're using our sculpting brushes, if we have our standard brush selected and we turn off Z-Add and we turn on RGB, and we go into our subtool menu, you're going to see there's a little paintbrush icon in there. So with RGB turned on, and let's go ahead and select like a red color. Right now, if we turn off polyframe, because that colorize isn't turned on, no matter what color I select, it's going to go ahead and fill the entire object with that color. Uh, that's because by default, colorize is turned off. If I turn that on, it's going to turn white. By default, the vertex color or the poly paint is going to be white in color. So now when I move this around and to any color, it's not going to change anything. So now we can start painting because we have colorize turned on. Now, because we have RGB on this brush turned on, if we go ahead and turn colorize off and we just pick a color, like say red, and we start painting, you're going to see it's going to give us a little graphical glitch. If we just kind of move our object a little bit, it'll snap out of that. Uh, but it's going to turn on colorize for us. So whenever you start painting on your object, colorize is going to turn on. You're going to see the white vertices that were there by default. And now we're able to paint in areas with whatever color we choose. So we choose a blue color, now we can paint with blue. Now, with Sculptress mode turned on, we can use Poly Paint in conjunction with Sculptress Pro to give us very, very specific results. So if I go back to the uh, rear end of this mousse here, or if you want, if you don't have an object you're working with, just go to back to the sphere and then hit Make Poly Mesh 3D. And again, it looks blue because we have blue select and it looks red when we select red. But again, because we hit Make Poly Mesh 3D, we can start painting on the sphere, and now we're painting uh, color on that sphere. So to start out with, go ahead and turn Sculptures Pro mode off, and let's talk a little bit about Poly Paint. So in essence, what Poly Paint is doing is giving us vertex color. So if we turn on Polyframe, you're going to see everywhere we have a junction of two edges, you get to a point, and that's a vertice. And then if you start painting, you're going to be able to paint color on those vertices. Now. One limitation of poly painting, just like when you're sculpting detail without Sculptors Pro mode turned on, if you turn off polyframe here, you're going to see it's pretty low resolution. In order to paint in higher resolution, you're going to see it's kind of aliased along this corner. What you have to do is go down here to geometry, hit this divide button, or you can hit control D, and that'll go ahead and give you more geometry, which in essence gives you more vertices to color on, and now you can paint finer detail here. So we'll go ahead and so this is our low res. It looks like an old JPEG there. It's been saved too many times or compressed too many times. And now we have a little bit higher resolution, not quite as bad aliasing. If we hit divide one more time, now we're up to 154,000 polygons. And now as I continue painting, it's getting more and more detail. So this one's a little less um, stepped. And then we hit divide one more time. Now we're getting very, very smooth results here. And now we have subdivision history, so we can drop back down. And now we're at the lowest subdivision. We're back down to hardly any polygons. And then as we continue to subdivide, we got more and more polygons, more and more vertices to paint on. And now we're able to paint in a lot of detail. Now what Sculptures Pro is going to allow us to do is paint in detail where we need it and not have to give detail to every single area of our object. So when we're using subdivision, it's just subdividing our entire surface. With Sculptures Pro, we're able to just put detail where we want it and leave the rest of the surface alone if we want to. So let's go ahead and take that undo slider and we'll drag it back. Let's go ahead and turn on polyframe as well. And we'll go back to where we just had our make poly mesh 3D here. So again, it turned off colorize for us. All you gotta do, start painting on your object, hit okay. And now turn off polyframe and you're gonna see we're back to poly painting our object here. So here's our low res poly painted and hardly any vertices. We've only got 8,000 active points. So it's a pretty low res object. Now, if uh, instead of subdividing and giving us tons and tons of geometry, we think we got up to 150,000 polygons. All we need to do if we want to paint more detail is turn on Sculptures Pro mode. And because Sculptures Pro is going to tessellate on the fly, when we start painting this object, already we're getting better edges than this one over here. If we turn on Polyframe, the reason for that is we're getting more vertices in this area because Sculptures Pro is automatically tessellating this area. Again, if because we have Adaptive Size turned on, and this is what we already went over, uh, it's going to let our draw size dictate how small that tessellation is. So we can even get more and more detailed as we make our brush size smaller and smaller. So you can see I have a lot of geometry in here, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then the original geometry here. 
So I'm able to, like remember when we did subdivided and make a little, made a little smiley face, I can put a high res little smiley face right here, no problem. And we're only at 20,000 points. So instead of subdividing this thing up to 150,000 polygons just to put a little smiley face here, all I have to do is go through here and put in a smiley face. It'll subdivide just this area where I need it to, and I'm good to go. So just like when you're sculpting, use Sculptress Pro to give you more polygons just where you need it. Now this will come in handy whenever we get to the Z plugin polygroup it options that we're going to get to in a bit. And incidentally, if you wanted to, you can actually choose two colors. So we can say choose red for this color, and then for this other color, we'll choose an orange. So we've got red and orange chosen. And if we turn on gradient, you can see with different brush pressure, if I brush very lightly, it's going to be red. If I brush very heavily, it's going to trans it's going to go back to orange. So you can see I can very subtly go from orange to red and then back to orange just based on my brush pressure. And if I choose switch color on or off, it'll go ahead and switch between those. And it's going to work with sculpting brushes as well. In fact, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I'm going to hit B, S, and we're going to grab Snake Sphere. And we're going to talk more about this later on in the series. But if you start sculpting with this and you do a heavy stroke and then do a light stroke and then do a heavy stroke, you're going to see it's going to alternate between orange and red based on your brush pressure. So you can use that to your advantage too if you'd like. Now let's go ahead and drag that undo slider back. And there is one more issue I wanted to make sure I brought up. So we've got here, we've got our original poly paint. And then we want to go in here with say our standard brush, just our standard brush selected. And we have RGB turned on. For you guys, it'll be BST to select your standard brush. And like I said before, you can use, let's go ahead and turn off gradient. And we'll go ahead and paint with a red color here. So you're gonna see I'm gonna get higher resolution because I can tessellate in this area. However, if I make my brush size really small and I start painting, you're gonna see it might have a little bit of a hard time uh, picking up areas to tessellate. And that's because what it needs is vert information first. So you're gonna see if I start here and go along this line, it'll tessellate fine. But if I start going across here, It'll start maybe skipping if I go, th yeah, okay, so here's a better example. So if I go across these verts, tessellate's fine because it's always able to find a vertice to tessellate from. If I go across these edge loops, it's, it's gonna have a really hard time. So I can go across here, but then if I go down this way, it's gonna lose it. And if I go back up this way, it's gonna lose it. So if you know you have an area that's very low density, but you wanna paint high density detail, remember you can always go back to your smooth brush, change your Z intensity down to zero, Make your brush size pretty big, and then just tessellate the area you want to start painting in just to give you a few more vertices to grab onto, and then switch back over to your standard brush with RGB turned on, make your brush size small, and now you'll have a much easier time going through here and painting a much more consistent line. Actually, now that I mention it, let's go ahead and go into texture import. I'm gonna grab just a JPEG. If you've gone to my YouTube channel and watched my sci-fi pistol series, you can watch the making of this pistol right here. So we go to here to texture import, grab the texture, hit the plus sign. Now we have spotlight and we can use this one to scale. We can use this little icon here to do opacity. We can hit Z to go into spotlight mode. We can do shift Z to get rid of it and then Z to bring it back. So we'll do shift Z. We'll go ahead and grab a polyplane here, go into edit mode. Now, normally what I would do after going into make poly mesh 3D is I'd go over here to geometry, turn on the smooth modifier, divide this up hit shift Z to bring my spotlight back. Let's go ahead and turn off polyframe. We're gonna turn on RGB with Z add off. And with our standard brush, we would sit here and just paint this on. So as you can see, as I poly paint through and then I do shift Z, you're seeing we're poly painting through spotlight onto this polyplane. Of course, you can do this with any object. If you go in here and you grab a sphere, make a poly mesh 3D, subdivide it up, hit Z to bring poly or spotlight back on, and then Z again to drop it and then go through here. Incidentally, if you want to know more information about this, not only covering the making of this gun in the Sci-Fi Pistol series, but also just basic spotlight functionality, watch my intro to ZBrush part one, part two, part three. Somewhere in there, I cover spotlight functionality. But anyway, you can use this to uh, color through. You can also hit X symmetry. So you can hit go across X symmetry and you can poly paint across symmetry, of course. And there's a lot of really interesting things that you can come up with using spotlight. Now, what I want to get across here is, of course, we're talking about Sculptures Pro. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down to subdivision level one, delete higher, and you're going to see if I poly paint through here, if you've already watched the poly painting section, you're going to see when we're poly painting, it's only going to transfer 
that color information to available vertices. And with a mesh this low, there's not a whole lot of resolution. So of course we need to subdivide to get that resolution. But since we've learned about Sculptures Pro here, if I grab a white color, go to Color, Fill Object, just fill this object with white. And even with this low res mesh, no subdivisions, let's go ahead and bring back our um, concept here with Spotlight just by hitting Z. And then as long as we have Sculptures Pro turned on and we have our brush size smaller so we can uh, use this adaptive size functionality to go ahead and paint, you can see we can very specifically choose where that detail comes in at. So I'm going to go ahead and poly paint this area here. We'll do Shift Z. You can see it's coming in nice and clean. Uh, we're only at 31,000 points. We don't have to subdivide this thing up to like 2 million points just to get detail. You can see we got all this detail we're not using, but we're getting all the detail we need because we're able to paint that exactly in where we need it.